and probably criticize after the fact. <laughs> oh, it's so easy up here. Piece of cake. Everything's so obvious. <laughs> Four to go. Three to go. Well, the starts have been fascinating. Going into the match, there was a, a widespread feeling that Spithill would attack Burling there, but the Kiwis had much the better of these skirmishes. Burling and his calm, serene demeanor have just been coping so well with the challenges of going head-to-head -head with the aggressive American team helmsman. So the USA have port entry for this first race of the day. They get to enter the starting box 10 seconds ahead of their opponents. And the pre-start, as ever, the most intriguing of battlegrounds. Let's check in with Freddie Carr, who's a, a key member of the British team out here. He's out on the water for us today. Freddie, what changes do you expect to see from the, the USA in particular, from Spithill, uh, regarding the starting policy? Because it hasn't been working for him so far. Yeah, their starting policy so far didn't really go that well for them last weekend. Since I've been out on the water, they've just done pre-start after pre-start after pre-start going through their drills, and I must say, to the naked eye, you can see that the boat looks a little bit lighter. Something's changed, and the Americans look quite slippery on their practice reaches. They definitely look like they've taken a step forwards in boat speed. Great stuff, Freddie. Excellent intel, that's why you're out there. So race number five is underway and we get our first chance to analyse just exactly how Jimmy Spithill's Americans have changed things. Have they come up with any answers to the speed and the consistency of Burling's New Zealanders? Ken, how are you reading this pre-start? Well, both boats again are tracking back to the starting line quite early. 45 seconds to go and you'll see that starting line at the top of our screen. Team New Zealand taking solace down at that ley line line. That's that, that yellow line is about as close as they ever want to get. They've gotten down there and Oracle cannot hook anymore. They're going to be committed to the high side. 14 to kill. They're talking about 14 to kill. This is still a lot of time to kill for these two boats. Oracle just speeding up the line with 17 seconds left. Now they're slowing down. This is going to be about time and distance. So the Americans picked up a, a penalty on the start line in the first race of the match. They'll be needing to be very careful here. They're perilously close as the clock ticks down. They are across the line too early. Yet again, they've gone too soon. And the New Zealanders will look to make hay in the meantime. Oracle Team USA have to drop two boat lengths behind the Kiwis. So advantage New Zealand yet again at the start. That was very, so, you know, in the first race that Oracle Team USA was over early, it was, they were just close, they were tight, they got himself into a tough spot. That was just pulling the bow down too soon and simply going for it with a fraction of a second not in the back. I mean, that was, that was super close. I'm sure we'll see a review of that, but that was very close. But man, would Jimmy Spithill like that one back. Screaming across the water then, up on the foot is at 30 plus knots. And the Kiwis in front at mark one. They're close to 40 knots with a wind speed of only eight and a half knots. So it really gives you some kind of indication as to just how much pace can be generated by these flying machines. And we're gonna reel out that stat again, Ken. The New Zealanders, when they are first to the first mark, have a 100% success rate in the races. 100%. And that goes all the way back to the very first race that they sailed in the Challenger Trials in that ladder, in that ladder contest early on. And yeah, it's not a great spat, a stat if you're a if you're an American fan. There's no doubt about that. But so both teams driving near the boundary. This is the replay of the start line. There's the start. That red line is the start line. Obviously an imaginary line right there. You're going to see you're going to see Oracle Team USA just a fraction early. My goodness. And remember, this isn't done by the naked eye. These boats are now too fast. This is done electronically in a back room to, I believe, measurements within a centimeter of accuracy of the four corners of the boat. So there's somebody sitting in a, in a dark, dingy room making this decision and not necessarily a human out on the race course. 
So into gate two with the New Zealanders out in front and able to dictate a little bit. What's the decision going to be here from the USA? They're going to follow them around the mark. They've opted not to split the course. Oracle's kept it close. Remember, by the first by the first gate in the first couple of races, there was quite a wide gap. Same attack from the Americans. Not the cleanest of maneuvers. You see the barrels plunging down a little bit into the water. They seem to have recovered decently enough as the Kiwis go about their business in their usual slick, crisp fashion. That radical turn speed that we've become very used to. But I'll tell you what, I, when we talked to Freddie Carr in the pre-start, we'll go back to him in a minute here, he thinks he sees something. Believe me, these guys who do this every single day, like Freddie has over the last couple of years, they see things that we clearly don't see. He, there is no doubt that Oracle has worked very hard to lighten their boat this past week. There's a maximum weight limit and a minimum weight limit that are about 100 kilos apart. And they supposedly have worked very hard to get down to the minimum end of that weight limit. You know what? This is boat speeds and BMG up the race course that we haven't seen out of Oracle. Some encouraging signs for Jimmy Spithill's crew. Dial down. Build, so starboard tack advantage to Oracle. Dial down. Emirates team New Zealand has to dip behind the first pass we've seen in this event. A seminal moment, and the Americans will be absolutely thrilled to see it. Their support on the shore will have spent a very, very anxious few days. Knowing that they're up against the clock, really, those five days that they had to tweak and adjust, has it been enough? Engineers, fans, designers, sailing team, families, they're waiting for that moment right there. That This five days of work, was it worthwhile? And sure enough, they're quicker right now. There's no doubt. So let's have another word with Freddie Carr out on the water for us. Freddie, we've seen the Americans move in front. Is it clear and obvious to you that the changes have worked? Can we say that yet? Yeah, I think you can say that for sure. Oracle are faster through the water. There's two standout things to me right now as I was right in next to Oracle then. They're not dropping their dagger board all the way down to extension, so they're effectively not going all the way to extension as that opens up the angle, makes the board faster. Never dial down here. New Zealand dial them down, Oracle take the transom. And the other thing is their rudders look really different to me, a, mu a step closer to New Zealand's rudders. Getting Freddie excited out on the water. Two <laughs> passes early in the race. Thank you, Freddie, by the way. Two passes already, both on starboard tack advantages, two very equal boats. Both boats protesting on that last dial down. My guess is we're gonna have a green again. There, there, there won't be any flags. Tell you what, though, the umpires are taking their sweet time talking about this one. He's got a penalty. So protests have been lodged, and the Americans have picked up the penalty. Second of the race. How costly might that be? This is where it happened. Dial down. They determined that. Emirates Team New Zealand, the starboard tack boat there, had to get out of the way. Boy, these guys, you can just see on board, these guys didn't think they did anything wrong, but they have to drop back another two boat lengths. Stand by, get the speed on. Graphic right. 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 bottom left of your screen, giving you a clear picture of exactly where they are on the course currently. Third leg of seven, those include the two reaches at the start and to the finish. So here's the replay. Oracle Team USA. What happens there is that Emirates Team New Zealand gets to go perpendicular to the wind, so essentially right across that line, that, that, that football line that's in the, that imaginary line. They, did, they had another 10 degrees to bear off. They didn't bear off that 10 degrees. I think the umpires probably said, New Zealand could have gone further, but they couldn't have because Oracle was in the way. That's a, tough, that's a touch and go one. Maybe we can get to Richard Slater at some stage in the broadcast and he, and he can explain. On the American boat. 
Okay, very right, Melinda. Very tough, big tough. Okay, here we go, take some stuff. High group, high group. Hey, and stand by. High group all the way. Yeah. And go all the way to boundary. Yeah. Three, Happy. two, one. Three, two, one, mate. So one last tack into the gate. They should lay the gate from there, both of these boats. And the New Zealanders beginning to stretch out in front. That second penalty that the Americans picked up really costing them on the latter part of this leg. Super costly and very hard to burn a penalty without burning too big a penalty. If you come off your foils when you're trying to burn a penalty, it can be catastrophic. But there's still not, this is that one mistake range that we always talked about, that 100, 150 meters. One mistake, and that gets eaten up in no time. Oracle's gonna have to tack one more time for this mark, I think. MST New Zealand did a very nice job of finding the ley line, one and in. Oracle had to tack because of the boundary, most likely. And they're gonna probably have to tack one more time. Creates a split, but this is a costly maneuver. Go, Louis, go, Louis. There they go, one more maneuver. We have seen repeatedly through the month of racing out here on the Drake Sound. Sometimes that is all it takes. Sometimes that is just the difference between the two boats. Just elongates the course a little bit. They have to sail the further distance. And New Zealanders lead now a pretty healthy one. Going back out on the water to Freddie. Freddie, give us an idea of the wind shifts right now. We always get caught up in the boat speed and the maneuvering, but give us a little weather, uh, little weather profile out there on the water. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's not too shifty, Ken, but the thing that stands out to me is how patchy it is. It's never above 10 knots, but there's some quite big holes on the race course. And in the second half of that upwind, not only did Oracle get a penalty, but they just sailed in slightly less pressure than the New Zealanders coming in. So they took the two boat length uh, uh, loss with the penalty, but were just a little bit softer in pressure. But there's opportunities out there for the tacticians to join the pressure dots together and for Tom Slingsby to close this game right down. Leave the gym. coming up. You see Jimmy Spithill spinning those handles on the wheel. You wonder if that wrist injury is making any effect on how he controls the dagger boards. But perhaps as expected, he kind of batted away the question when asked pre-race. Didn't want to dwell on that. It wasn't going to make a difference to him. He felt certainly that's the image he has to project. Perception is very often uh, more important than reality. I can think in those that arm could be literally hanging off the socket, and he wouldn't know the difference at this stage. It doesn't matter. This is the this is the Super Bowl. This is it. So one more, uh, one more maneuver from the Americans, which we discussed at the top of the gate. Average VMG, very interesting. Goes to New Zealanders a little bit, but that takes into account, remember, they had to slow down a couple times on Oracle Team USA, so it's probably a little bit deceiving. Most of this lead that they lost, and by the way, a bad jive, probably in a light air zone by Oracle Team USA. They're having at the bottom of the screen to do a radical course change to try to get the speed up again. Those jives are devastating when they drop back down in the water. It's so hard to get the boat back going again. Back to Freddie Carr for saying, Freddie, are you surprised to see these guys all sailing with their Code 2 jibs or their kind of medium heavy air jibs today rather than the light jibs? Yeah, I, I must say I'm a little bit surprised by that. But on the first route, Kenny, we know it's about getting to Mark 1 first and for Oracle, for them to try and defend and keep the New Zealanders behind. And effectively, on, you've got less sail area, and it makes you faster on the reach. So you take a you take a small punishment on the windward lures to try and be faster on the reach. Got it. Freezes 221. There's a shot from our drone, chasing in behind the Kiwis. We are trying to get the drone driver to get it between those hulls right off the water. They're a little That's skeptical. The we said in the challenge. Right. Happy. One or two people are a bit anxious about that, I imagine, in terms of the, um, the safety factor. And there might be a 
Might be a small financial factor involved too. If you're an Oracle fan right now, you take a lot of solace in the fact that there is no question they're quicker. You have to eliminate these tough maneuvers though. Here's the bad job. They might have gotten a little slow going into it. They splash down. It just, once in this light air, you splash down both holes. They are glued to the water. And what was it, a 200 meter lead turns into a 400 meter lead in no time. Well, he's full of fighting tool, Jimmy Spithill. Let's not forget, four years ago in San Francisco, he led the comeback from 8-1 down. And he knows what it takes. But he is getting himself into a pretty sizable hole at this point. For all the chat, for all the confident talk, he knows that these guys have a fast boat and a very slick system. We're seeing Simon van Velthoven, he's the Olympic cyclist from 2012. Head rumor, down. Yeah, room around town, he actually hasn't seen any of any race yet. <laughs> On board the boat. On Peter Burling's shoulder there briefly. So Kiwi's bossing it at the moment and seemingly heading for another victory. It would be five in a row on the Drake Sound in the America's Cup match. They would be so well placed as they bid to win back this trophy. They were victorious, of course, in 95 and in 2000. And they are desperate to bring it back to Auckland, bring it back to the North and South Island and the four and a half million people or so there who are craving this success. It's interesting, in this race in particular, the Kiwi's success have really been a more classic match racing situation, not necessarily the boat speed that we've been seeing. They won the start. The other guy was over early. They won the dial down. The other guy got a penalty. So it's really fascinating that what everybody in the world thought was going to be the weakness of the Kiwis in this particular race has clearly been a strength. So the Cyclos have obviously commanded a lot of attention and we know that it is a very efficient system of pushing the hydraulic power around and generating the energy required for all these different maneuvers. And there, of course, is Glenn Ashby with his little gaming console. His little Xbox there. He's, he's controlling all the wing. And what's interesting is you see the wing very rarely go in and out in a radical way. He's really controlling the twist in the camber much more reactively than the other teams have been able to do. He doesn't have a winch. He is not ever on a winch. He doesn't touch a rope. And we've discussed it before, Kenny, but also what, what seems to be clear is they have this brilliant division of labor so that no one man is overburdened with responsibilities and decision-making. That's right. The, you know, we all talk about the power, and we'll get into the power a little bit more and how they're accumulating and using the hydraulic energy, but Listen, the windage and the ability for the cyclists to use their hands to help do other parts of the boat, help maneuver other parts of the boat, is clearly a huge byproduct of the cyclers that gets far less attention. The cyclers are obvious, but what Blair Took is doing right there, like right there with all those buttons, he's controlling all the positioning of the foil there, I think with a joystick. He's looking at the camera going, oh no, they got me, they caught me. <laughs> <laughs> but just look at the almost surgical way in which they maneuver and manipulate their boat. Barely seen them making an error in the America's Cup match as a whole. They have been very, very consistent. The USA now have a huge amount of work to do. 
New Zealand heading downwind for the final time in the race. Just the blast reach to finish after that. These guys look slick, though. And Freddie, I think we see longer tips on the on the Oracle boat. I think we see longer tips and certainly more of an angle, more of an aggressive angle, something similar that, that we've seen on the Kiwi boat throughout this whole event. You're right there, Ken. I think their medium tips, they all they look like they're medium tips with an extension on. As I mentioned earlier, the board doesn't look all the way down, so effectively canting the board out a little bit more, getting a step towards that aggressive angle the Kiwis have got. I heard you talking about the wing setup on New Zealand. We've just followed them upwind, and it is mind-blowing how dynamic the top two flaps are. I've heard about it talked a lot, a lot. I've never been close enough, and it is a constant movement. Glen Ashby, it's like a hummingbird wind coming in and out, and when that mode is locked in, it looks seriously impressive. Well, we got you the ringside seat today, Freddie. Yeah. Bet you wish you had that a couple of weeks ago. Maybe a couple months. Oh, maybe right. a couple yeah. months ago. <laughs> Yeah, doing a lot of learning right now. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. You know, you, you guys with your incredible accents and great phrases, I have not heard hummingbird wing in a long time <laughs> when referenced to any sort of a sailboat or a... That's why he's out there. <laughs> You better, you better prepare the ground, Ken. Uh, prepare your chair yep. for Come the on new in. man in town. <laughs> Come on in. And it is so straightforward, seemingly. When you're Peter Burling, nothing is complicated. 26-year-old, entirely unflustered, taking a wonderfully uncomplicated approach to this whole campaign. Right until he soaks all of his friends in the high side there. <laughs> but it, we keep repeating this, and you have to. 100%. We're still at 100%, these guys. First, first mark first. 100% of the time they go on to win the race. And just take a look at exactly where they are in contrast to the Americans. We've seen some big margins of victory, yeah. and the Americans now down at seven knots of boat speed. They're in all kinds of bother. Okay, guy. Yeah. Another bad job dive on board USA. You have to head up so high to get the breeze, that apparent wind back forward again. They still have eight or nine knots, but you can see the holes. We're looking over our monitors out onto the race course. You can see the holes on the race course, and Oracle happens to be in a big one right now. Hole meaning light air versus the darker spots in the water where the puffs are. Well, having a great day, the Kiwis. The All Blacks victorious over the British and Irish Lions early this morning in Auckland in the first test match. And thousands of New Zealanders here in Bermuda enjoying yet another success, another hammer blow delivered by the Kiwis. They have powered into a 4-0 lead in the America's Cup match. They need three race wins to the trophy. And the dominance, the dominance continues. You've got to ask yourself at this point, just what on earth can the USA do to hold their momentum? But this time around, this this match was about this this race was about mistakes. We've heard Jimmy Spithill come back in and say, you know what, we felt okay, and all of us with our used our eyeball test and said, wait a second, you guys, those last weekend, you guys look pretty slow to all of us, all the rest of us in the real world. Today, I, I'm not so sure. I think they come in and say, you know what, you guys. We were quick. We were quick on the first reach. We made a mistake. We caught them twice. We made a mistake. And then all of a sudden, the wheels kind of fell off. I think they're way more in the game than they were last weekend. Well, we'll try and get a, a view from Jimmy Spithill shortly to discover if he's feeling confident and positive in the same manner. But the margin of victory is another big one. Is this a team reassessing? Is this a team digesting the margin of victory for the New Zealanders? Right there, boys, and get ready for the next one. Yeah, they've got to go big in the next one because this match is getting away from them. 
we're going to try a little more out, though. The going at times. Yeah. Talking about you happy with the rudders. They're going at times. That means they're probably stalling or cavitating a little bit at times. They can move that rake around a little bit. There's a finite amount that can go between the two rudders. I believe it's three and a half degrees, but they'll do some fine-tuned detailing to try to gain a little more speed going into this next race. So across the finish line and plunging down, but beyond two minutes from the Kiwis. That's the biggest margin so far for all their extra boat speed, if that is what they seem to have found. That is still...